So this problem is a little bit convoluted and we're going to divide it by color just to keep track of things. So for the first segment of the journey, we're going to kind of use an orange color to denote all of the quantities. Now during that segment, the rocket is moving in a straight line path and it has an initial velocity of 100 meters per second. We also know that the time required for the rocket to travel that straight line path is three seconds and that the acceleration is 30 meters per second squared. What we're going to do is we're going to figure out how far the rocket has traveled this way. So we'll just call that X1 as well as how far the rocket has traveled this way. So we'll call that Y1. Now it's moving along a straight line so we can use the following equation from kinematics. This delta X is going to be this distance that it travels along that straight line path. We can go ahead and plug in the known values that we listed earlier. And when we do that, we see that this distance is equal to 435 meters. Now, why did we do that? Well, because now if we look at that orange right triangle, we can go back and label the hypotenuse of that orange right triangle as 435 meters. If we look at the diagram, we can see that the cosine of the 53 degree angle is equal to the adjacent, which is x1, over the hypotenuse, which is the 435 meters. Let's multiply both sides by 435 meters. And when we do that, we can see that the x1 is going to be about 261.8 meters. Now we'll do something similar to find y1. We look back at that orange right triangle, we see that the sine of 53 degrees is equal to opposite, which is y1, over hypotenuse, which is 435 meters. Again, multiply both sides by 435. When we do that, we see that y1 is about 347.4 meters. So we'll go back to the diagram and make those labels. Now it turns out that we also want to figure out that final speed V in orange right there. So we know that the final speed will equal the initial plus the acceleration times the time. We'll come over here. We know the initial was 100 meters per second plus the acceleration multiplied by the time of three seconds. And when we work this out, we'll see that that final speed is 190 meters per second. So we'll label that and we will also be sure to label this angle right here as also being the 53 degrees. Now on to the purple segment of the journey. And for the purple segment, we're going to say that the velocity when it reaches its peak trajectory right up here, so it's maximum height above the ground, which we will symbolize as Y2, the velocity in the vertical direction right there is actually going to be zero because when an object reaches max height, it momentarily stops in the vertical direction, giving it that final velocity of zero. As far as the initial velocity in the Y direction is for the purple segment, we just need to figure out what the Y component is. So we have the X component pointing to the right, and then we have the Y component right there. Now you can see that the Y component is opposite of the 53 degree angle. So we would have to take the 190 and multiply that by the sine of the 53 degree angle. Let's pick up our calculator and process that. And when we do that, we get about 151.7 meters per second. Okay, so what can we figure out? Well, we can actually figure out the flight time by using the following equation. We know the final velocity in the Y direction is going to equal the initial velocity in the Y direction plus the acceleration in the Y direction times the time. So we can actually figure out the time for the purple segment of this journey. So the final velocity is zero, the initial is the 151.7, and then the acceleration in the Y direction is the negative 9.8. You would add 9.8t to both sides of the equation, and then finally you would divide both sides by 9.8. And you would see that the time there is 15 and a half seconds. So that's gonna be useful because for the orange segment of the journey, which we should call T1, the time was three seconds. Now we have time T2, which is 15 and a half seconds. If only we could figure out the time of flight for the green segment of the journey. And of course, that's what we're gonna to try to do next. But before we can do that, we wanna calculate Y2. So we're still looking at the purple segment of the journey here. And we can use the following equation to calculate Y2. So for this delta Y, this distance that the object travels on its way down, we can just start to plug in some of the known information. The initial velocity, remember, for the purple segment was that 151.7. We just figured out the time of flight for the purple segment, 
and then the acceleration is negative 9.8. Now, when you calculate this, you're going to get this delta y equal to approximately 1175. But let us be clear what this actually represents. Remember, we're looking at the purple segment. So we do gotta be a little careful here. We just calculated for the purple segment that change in height right there. That's the delta y, okay? So in order to get y2, which is the maximum height, you would actually need to come in there, take that delta y right there, and then add it to the y1 that it's already traveled on its way up during the orange segment of the journey. So we'll be very careful here. We'll take the 1175 meters and we'll add that to the 347.4 meters. And when we do that, we can see that y2 is going to be 1522 meters. That's the maximum height that the projectile reaches. And in fact, excuse me, that is the correct answer to part A. Very good. Now, we move on to part B, which wants the flight time, the total flight time. Remember, we have the three seconds for the orange part. We have the 15 and a half seconds. What we don't yet have is the time for the green part. So that's our next goal. And to do that, we're going to start labeling some items for the green part of the journey. So for the green part of the journey, let's look at the information in the Y direction. Now, we're up here at maximum height. Remember, the initial velocity in the Y direction would now be that zero meters per second, because now the rocket is starting at that maximum height. It's going to fall a vertical displacement of negative 1522 meters. Notice it's negative because the object is starting up here for the green segment of the journey and reaching the ground level at the end of that journey and it's in free fall, so the acceleration is still negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So we can actually take these data and solve for the time of flight during the green part. We'll use this equation from kinematics and plug in the known values. This here zeroes out. If we simplify the right-hand side, we'll have negative 4.9 t squared. So then just divide both sides by negative 4.9 and then take the square root to get the time. We've gone ahead and have called this T3, and when we compute this, we can see that T3 is about 17.6 seconds. Okay, so now we're in business. We go back to this ever-growing picture. We'll clean it up a little bit. And we can very easily get the total time, because all we have to do is add T1 in orange plus T2 in purple plus the T3 in green that we just figured out. And when we do that, we get a total time of about 36.1 seconds. This is the correct answer to part B. Now on to part C. We need the total horizontal displacement. Now we already have X1, which is nice, but we need to figure out the distance along the purple segment, which is X2, and then also the distance along the green segment, which we will call X3, and then we'll just add those all together. So how do we do that? Well, we consider the velocity in the X direction. Remember, right up there, the rocket was moving at 190 meters per second. And we can actually take that 190 meters per second and find the X component right here. So we're just gonna call that sort of VX. We know that's 53 degrees. We have a nice right triangle there. So you can see that the cosine of 53 would equal adjacent, which is VX over hypotenuse, which is 190. If you multiply both sides of that by 190, you will get 190 cosine of 53, which is 114.3 meters per second. That is how fast the rocket is moving horizontally during X2 as well as X3. So now it's gonna be relatively easy to find those values because for example, for X2, we would take the initial velocity of 114.3 meters per second, multiply that by the time which was the 15 and a half seconds. And then continuing the kinematics equation, you would have one half times acceleration. Acceleration is zero in the X direction, and then times 15 and a half squared. This will just knock out so we can simplify it accordingly. And then we can set up a very similar calculation for X3. We take the 114.3 meters per second, multiply that by the flight time, and then that'll just be plus zero. Let's pick up our calculators now and, and determine these distances. And when you do that, you can see that X2 is 1772 meters approximately, and X3 is working out to about 2012 meters. And now we've got it. We can get the total horizontal displacement 
by adding x1, x2, and x3. So let's go ahead and do that. And when you do that, the total horizontal displacement is going to be about 4,046 meters. This is the correct answer to part C. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it.